Internet Plain Clothes Fang from Lords of the Trident here. Um, a lot of people have asked me, how do you make your t-shirts? And I've done a couple of articles on how the t-shirt process is created, but I thought, hey, I'd do a video to show you that's a little easier to see. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need to make a kick-ass t-shirt is a kick-ass t-shirt design. And you wanna print that out on transparency paper. What is transparency paper? It's this see-through uh, type of paper, kind of like overhead projector film, right? I've printed out my design on this transparency paper. And what's very important is that it's one color, black and white. You don't want any sort of gray. You want a nice crisp line. So everything here is either pure black or pure white. Where it's pure white, obviously, it turns into see-through. And this is how your design is gonna look once it's printed out on the t-shirt. The next thing you're gonna need is photo emulsion paint. You can pick up photo emulsion paint at just about any craft store uh, or online. What it is, is it's a mix between kind of a paint and a glue. And when mixed with the emulsifier, when mixed with the, the agent, uh, it becomes reactant to UV light. When UV light hits that paint, it's gonna turn hard and uh, water impermeable. Next, you're gonna need a smooth piece of wood uh, to put your shirts on. Uh, I got this piece of wood from Menards. It's a countertop board. Um, it was pretty cheap, and I just cut it into the shape of, uh, you know, most the, the body of most t-shirts. You see, I added some duct tape on the end just so that the um, sharp edges don't catch the shirts or anything while they're there. After that, you'll need some squeegees. Squeegees are to move the paint across your screen. Um, you can get all sorts of different sizes. Uh, I believe this one's a 14 inch, this one I think is a 12, and this is a 10. A 150 watt clear light bulb and uh, something to put it in. Basically, what we're trying to create is something like this. It's a screen with a design on it. And uh, we're also trying to aggravate the cat. The next thing you're gonna need is ink. There's a couple different types of ink. Um, the most standard ink that you see on t-shirts is what, what's called Plastisol. It's basically plastic that sits on top of the t-shirt. The nice thing about Plastisol is it makes a really, really bright t-shirt design. Um, you know, when you see a Plastisol shirt, it just pops off of that t-shirt. The issue with Plastisol is that it needs to be cured at a very specific temperature and it gives off nasty fumes. So it's kind of out for the DIY approach, uh, unless you have a, you know, $1,500 dryer just sitting in your basement with a chemical hood and that kind of stuff. So the next possible approach is um, standard screen ball fabric ink, which is a water soluble ink. This ink's great, but the problem with it is that it soaks into the shirt. So if you have a yellow ink and a completely black shirt, this yellow ink is gonna soak into the shirt and turn kind of not quite as bright yellow as you might want it to be. Um, it's good if you have a water soluble black ink on like say a red shirt or a white shirt, because that's really gonna pop uh, and it's gonna soak into the shirt so when you wash it, uh, you won't be able to, you can close your eyes and you won't be able to feel basically where the ink is. Um, so long and short of it, just be careful about choosing water soluble ink based on uh, what color t-shirt you're gonna do. But Fang, what if I wanted to do like a, like a hot red design on a black shirt? What am I gonna do? Do I have to do Plastisol? Thankfully, no. Um, there is a third option and it's called Discharge Ink. Basically what this does is it mixes the ink with like a bleaching agent and it sits on top of the shirt. When you hit it with, uh, I believe it's 425 degrees or 375 degrees, one of those. When you hit it with that, um, it will activate the, bleach, the bleaching agent and it will bleach out the color on the shirt. So if you have a black shirt and you put discharge agent ink on it and then shoot it with a heat gun, for example, it will bleach out the black, turning it perfectly white, only where your designs are, and then replace it with an ink of your choice. So, this is what we're gonna be doing today. I've got my discharge agent right here, and my discharge activator. And then over on my shelf here, I've got a number of different inks. And today we're probably gonna be using the red ink. So now that we've got that down, let's head outside and I'll show you how to build the box to keep your screen in. Okay, here we are out in the garage, uh, and now we're gonna build our box to hold our screen. I've got some wood here. This is uh, white pine. Um, you can get away with using something like furring strips, which are pretty cheap, you know, 70 cents for an eight footer. 
But what I've found is in the past, um, they're not very true and you have to go through a lot of furring strips to find one that's relatively straight. So I pay a little extra money and I get the nicer wood, but it's a little less hassle in the end. So what I've done here, our design is uh, about 13 by 17. You wanna leave some room for the ink to well up on both the top and the sides. So what I've done is I've made the screen 16 and a half by 21, and I've already measured out where I'm gonna make my cuts here. So now, let's grab a circular saw and make our cuts. Okay, we got our pieces cut. I got two 16 and a halfs and two 21 inch pieces. Now, I want to fasten them together. So I've got a bunch of these tiny screws here. Now you can't just put the screws right into the wood, otherwise the wood will split. And then when you put the ink in there, the ink will drip out everywhere. It'll be a bad time. So the first thing that we gotta do is make some pilot holes in our wood. So I'm going to take some drill bits find the one that's just a little bit smaller than this guy and drill some pilot holes into the wood. And I grabbed an extra screwdriver just so I don't have to switch uh, after I've drilled. So, let's get going. Two frozen, hot and I made two holes in there, so I'm gonna put two screws in there. Just for a little extra stability. Now, repeat that on all four sides. All right, now that we got that done, have a nice, <laughs> you should have a nice box that uh, doesn't wiggle too much when you move it around. Next step, put the screen on. And for that, we're gonna head back down into the basement. All right, we're back down in the basement. We've got our box. Now we need to put the screen on it. For that step, you're gonna need some tools. You're gonna need a hammer. You're gonna need a staple gun and a pair of sharp scissors. You're also gonna need some of this kind of meshy curtain fabric, the kind of see-through stuff. I picked this up at a local thrift store, um, and it was very, very cheap. Uh, what you want to look for is a very close stitching. Basically, the closer, tighter the threads, the higher pixel density, you can kind of think of it, that you'll have, um, the higher resolution image you'll get out of it. So the closer the knit, the better. So we're going to take this, cut it up, and staple it to our box. Okay. One tool that you're gonna need that I forgot to tell you about, duct tape. But of course, who doesn't have duct tape? So now, we've got the fabric cut out. You see I've got some sort of extra hanging over the side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna staple down one side of it. So, I got this pretty good and centered. Let's add in some staples here. Now you can see I use a pretty decent amount of staples on here and you don't really have to be shy with it at all. For the next steps, you're gonna take your box and you're gonna pull it as tight as possible, almost to the point where you feel like you're gonna rip it and then staple down the other sides. Usually I like to get a partner to help me with this, so I'm gonna do that right now. All right, as you can see, I got all the staples on my frame here and it's pretty tight but I wanna make it even tighter. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut off the extra on the edge here and I believe maybe about a half an inch. Okay, now that we've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some duct tape and I'm going to pull off a strip that is about the size of one of the sides. So I'm gonna kind of measure it, do that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get part of the duct tape stuck to that little half inch of fabric that we've got on here. So if you see, part of it is connected and part of it is still open. So, what I'm gonna do now, just make sure that this is down. And I'm gonna just tug as hard as I can on both the tape and the screen. 
And then just pull and then use that duct tape to bring it down into place. Like so. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a much tighter, much tighter pull on this side here. And then also the duct tape is going to keep it in place. I'm going to do that for the next four sides. But wait a minute, Fang, what's the hammer for? Well, if you have some of your staples that don't quite go all the way into the wood, are not quite all flush, you can take your hammer and just sort of pound them back in so that you get a nice flush surface. Because this is the side that's going to go on the shirt, and you want that to be as flat as possible. So as I'm running my hand across here, I'm finding just a few that can go in a little further. Definitely doesn't hurt to be a little anal on this. Okay, there we go. Okay, we've got all of our sides duct taped and stretched, and this thing is nice and tight, which is exactly what we want. The next step is we're going to use the duct tape to create some wells for the ink um, to seep into instead of seeping through past our wood. If you look right here, it's nice and tight, but you know, imagine you're some ink. You can just kind of sneak right under here and get down in there and uh, possibly leak out into the shirt. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our duct tape and outline both the outside and then the inside, making a duct tape to duct tape bond so that we create sort of a margin area for the ink to live uh, so that it doesn't seep through and doesn't ruin our shirts. So we've created a duct tape to duct tape bond and we've used the edges of the wood here to make kind of a well. If you can see this, I've pushed the duct tape underneath where the wood and the screen meet and then that creates a little bit of an ink well which allows us to keep that ink in there and keep it from seeping onto the shirt below. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our photo emulsion and put it on the screen, let it dry. But before we do that, we have to make sure we're doing this in a non-UV environment, a UV-free environment. So I'd recommend doing this in like a basement or in a place with very, very little ambient light, especially sunlight. And before you start using photo emulsion, make sure that you've replaced the bulbs in your environment with these. They're standard bug bulbs and they give off no UV light. It's sort of the same idea as those red light bulbs that you'd see in a dark room when you're developing photography, if you've ever done that. So I'm gonna take these bulbs and replace them in my basement so we turn it into a UV free zone and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, you probably noticed by the yellow tinge down in the basement that we are now in a UV free zone. I've replaced all the bulbs in here with bug bulbs and then I've turned off all the other lights closed the doors, locked out the windows. We are safe, no UV in here. Now, we're ready to open up our photo emulsion paint, and we're gonna spread this lightly, lightly onto our blank screen. I'm gonna take my 10 inch squeegee here and just spread it across the screen, trying to get a light coat so that there's no pinholes, no light holes, that everything is evenly covered. If you get extra, just go ahead and put it back in. Once you've done this a few times and you've removed the majority of the excess paint, hold it up to your bug light and try to see if you see any pinholes. So I'm seeing a few, so I'm going to add in a little bit more emulsion paint and give it another run. Frozen 
That's pretty good. If your environment is completely UV free, like mine is here, you can let your uh, screen dry out in the open under a fan. If not, you may want to grab a plastic bucket, um, something definitely opaque, um, put it in there and let it dry, say, overnight. But since we have no UV in this environment, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my fan and start the drying process. Okay, we've got our screen. It's nice and dry on both sides. So now I'm going to place it down on some black fabric. The black fabric is to keep the ambient light from seeping through to the other side. And I'm going to move this table down just a little bit. I've got a 150 watt light bulb in here uh, that's about 18 inches off of the surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our design, which you see I've got two copies of the same, top, the same design that I've taped together. Reason for that is I want it to be very, very, very opaque. I'm going to put it where I want it in my screen. I'll show you. I've got it right here. Always, of course, being careful about the edges. Now, before we turn the light on, I need something to hold it down. So let me get a piece of glass here. I've picked up a number of different sized pieces of glass. Uh, this one seems to fit the frame that I've made pretty well. So I'm gonna just gonna sit it down here, place it over my design. The glass helps keep the design pushed down onto the screen uh, and keeps it from rising up off of the screen when we're burning it. So I'm gonna move this, this, uh, this screen over a bit. Uh, and I'm gonna pull it down and I'm gonna turn on my light here. What I wanna try to do is get about, for, for a design of this size and of this height, I'm gonna burn it for about, eh, maybe about 55 minutes or so, you know? So I want, eh, maybe 17-ish minutes uh, segmenting it into thirds. So I'm gonna do the top third first, the middle third second, and then the bottom third. So I'm gonna turn on this light there we go. And now, as you can see from the side here, I've got the light over about the top third of the design and it's starting to burn. So I'm gonna set a timer for 17 minutes and we will move it after 17 minutes. All right, it's been about 55 minutes underneath the lights. I've moved it every 17, 18 minutes. It's top third, middle third, bottom third. And now the most important step is to wash this out immediately. Uh, bring it over to your sink. Get about lukewarm water on here and start spraying. The parts that were black will wash out and the parts that were clear will stay um, opaque. You don't want to blast it with hot water. Um, you want to blast it with lukewarm water. If it's too hot, it might wash out extra stuff. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, it doesn't hurt to take it under the light and just make sure that you got every little piece of it. So I'm just inspecting it right now to see if there's any parts that I missed. Alright, there we go. We're all good to go. Put this under a fan, let it dry, and you can uh, pop your regular bulbs back in.